I should let people know that I've got my life. are going to my connection is unstable please wait while we try to reconnect well now why are you being unstable ain't no storm outside all right i'm gonna adjust my tripod i guess i should have did that before the camera started rolling or you can get up close of me hello hello that's a uh, robin williams on mrs doubtfire love that movie when he sticks his face in the pie because he has to hide his identity. And he goes, hello. <laughs> okay. Maybe it's just me. Let me see here. We've all been singing around here. So I still got the singing. The singing bug. So I cannot get an amen. Okay. We are finishing up a cute, adorable alligators and turtles. Technically, it's a diaper bag. It wasn't supposed to be. It was going to be, you know, like a diaper bag um, because we don't want to step on any toes. And if they already have a main diaper bag, um, the theme is alligators and turtles. And believe it or not, alligators were hard to find. I couldn't believe it. And I only found one. I found one print. It was located at a Joanne Fabrics. That was almost 20 miles from my house. Um, yes, I drove all the way there to get it because I did not want to wait on the shipping. Um, yeah, so I'm just so shocked that, that they didn't have more to choose from. Even eBay, crazy. So anyways, we were going to just do like a, like kind of like a tote bag so it can match the theme of the new baby to come. And uh, they can, you know, carry whatever they want in it. But I always go overboard. Now, I didn't turn it into a diaper bag because when I do my diaper bags, they have 9 to 11 pockets. And the pockets are specifically designed for baby bottles and sippy cups and so on. Oh, let me turn my computer, guys. One second. Excuse me. Excuse me. There we go. Okay. It's cold in the house. Go my switch. Um, but I, I went ahead and added, uh, we have four, a total of four inside pockets and one outside zipper pocket. So, oh, I got a new subscriber. Thank you. Thank you, Chim Chim. Thank you. So I went ahead and prepped everything so we can get this done quickly. I'm just going to walk you through the measurements. If you are interested in making a bag, um, like this one because you like how it looks and likes you like the size of it for when it's all done you'll see um, i'm going to walk you through i cut four squares at nine by seven and a half okay and you're going to cut two from each print so the squares are nine by seven and a half then i sewed them together you have to iron you have to flatten out your seams iron them all that good stuff then i added a strip on um, that was three, three and a half by 14. Cause when I got done putting this together, that was my total height. All right. Now, of course, this isn't the bag cause there's more to it. That would be a small bag. So my panel, if you want to make you, you can do your patchwork, however you want, however you want, but this panel ends up being 14 and a half by 18 and three quarters. Now, to complete that panel, you're going to want a bottom portion. This is the bottom portion. So we're going to sew this on. It's a navy blue. It matches the theme. And these are, <clears throat> this is six and three quarters by 18 and three quarters by the width of the panel. So that's your outside main pieces. Um, 
and I like to lay this bottom piece on top of the panel and I kind of guess what my complete measurement's going to be. I always go over a little bit because you can always trim a little off if it's not right. And then I go ahead and I prep my liner. So my liner is already prepped. Don't mind my other stuff here on the table. I was getting stuff ready here. And then we have an inside pocket, which is the length of the panel, 18 and three quarters. And this starts off to be a 10 inch piece. You got two pieces. It's double sided. By the time you get done uh, folding it in and sewing on it, it's about nine and a half. So it's about nine and a half tall. We're going to get, we're going to get three sections out of this when we sew it on. Then we have an outside pocket and yes, don't, I forgot, this is flannel. This is snuggle flannel. And then the other colors in the main panel are cotton, cotton blends. If you want to sew anything with flannel, I highly recommend that you pre-wash it in hot water and dry it on your highest heat. You want to get all the shrinking out of the way before you sew with it. Um, if you want to use flannel for a bag or a pocket or anything like that, I you've got to stabilize it. And when you go to stabilize it, you want to use steam. If you don't have an iron that has a steam, um, steam, uh, what do you call that? Is it, it whatever? I have a dry iron. Mine don't. Mine don't have water in it. I just use a spray bottle to create the steam, and that presses that stabilizer down nice and flat to the uh, flannel. Here's the pocket. The this is going to be the zipper pocket for the outside, so it'll look like this. And when when it's inside the bag. This is also flannel, so stabilized it. This is one long piece because it's gonna get folded like that. And then the zipper is gonna go here. So one continuous piece that measures nine and a quarter by 19 and a half. Again, this is flannel. It's been pre-washed, it's been stabilized. And just for my, cause I'm anal when it comes to doing stuff like this, I went ahead and stitched it all down so it cannot separate from the stabilizer. So it's a stitched pocket, a quilted pocket, which just makes it extra cool. Then we have a zipper panel. I already did this. If you want to know how I make my panels, you'd have to go back and watch my other videos. I cut these at 13 long by three and a quarter wide. That's what and they stabilize them all, all that good stuff. Last but not least, or no, this is going to be the inside pocket, and this is two of the two of the green pieces, cotton stabilized. You put them together, sew around, leave an opening to flip it out. This is nine and a half by eight and a quarter. Then I just sewed one. I mean, I prepped one long continuous strip for the straps. This is a five inch piece by 70 so five by 70 and how you make a strap you can go and watch my other videos for that one or if you already get it stabilize it fold it in half to make yourself a crease open it back up fold your raw edges down into that crease and then fold it again and then press that all the way down and I'm going to go ahead and just quilt this how it is. And then I will end up cutting it in half so I have enough for two straps. That's why it's 70 inches. And let's go. Let's get this baby going. Let's see. Don't forget this one. Yay. I have a new subscriber. A new subscriber. Hello, Eddie. Hello, Chim Chim. Welcome, welcome. I'm trying to reach a thousand subscribers so I can get welcomed into the real YouTube world. I think it's uh, your videos get put into the search engine or something like that. And you can monetize them and let's just have fun. I'm a fun person crazy, easy to get along with, <laughs> easy going. Now I might have to step off camera a few times just to do a little bit of ironing. I think the only time I'm going to have to do that is for the pocket. So I went ahead 
and I pulled that inside pocket right side out. And if you notice my opening, it's if it's lining up, it's closing and lining up naturally. So you could go to your iron and press that if you feel more comfortable with that. But if not, just put a clip there, keep it in place, just start sewing. No fancy work here. Nothing hard. Now I'm only going to sew around the perimeter once because after that you're going to be stitching this down to your interior panel. So all the extra sewing that you're going to do, um, you want to save room for that. Oh, and that wanted to bunch on me a little bit there. As you see, I don't have a fancy machine. It's just a domestic machine picked up from Walmart. I do have a fancy machine. I'm not going to lie. I want, I want a jukey. I got my eye on one. But this baby, this kind of machine has made all my bags so far for six years. Beautiful. <laughs> Would you believe I've made leather bags, vinyl bags, all kinds of bags, and they turn out great, and I've never changed my presser foot ever. <laughs> yes, that's true. I've always been the kind of person to improvise and just try to do stuff with, with what you got. Sometimes we want to do something and we don't have the patience to wait. <laughs> All right. So on my bottom part that was open, I got a little tiny, tiny little um, bunch right there. But it's not bad because this is going to be the bottom portion anyways. So this will get sewn on like that. Or we can make it taller on the back and sew it on like that. You know, I think we're going to go for the taller part because then that would fit like a baby bottle. You know, it'd be tall enough for a baby bottle to sit in there and not fall out. So that's what we'll do. So then we're going to declare this our top of the pocket. So you can either A, sew a couple straight lines so it's defined as the top portion, or you can fold it down and put a couple straight lines in it like that. Let's see how we'll look if we fold it down. Yeah, I think we'll just fold it down. We're not losing too much there. It's still a nice tall pocket. I will have some back noise because I have my, my children. I have my children. I always have my children. <laughs> I mean, they're awake. They're home. And they're breathing and talking and being kids in the next room. set this aside. I like to burn my threads. It's okay. She's excited. My five-year-old is autistic, so you will hear extra noises from her at times. She's the light of my life. She's the baby of seven. Okay, so here is how it looks when you fold that down, and it defines it as the top portion. It looks pretty nice. That'll be the pocket, pretty easy. So we're gonna set that aside with the zipper panel back here. Now for the easiest part, you guys. I should have prepped this off camera, but I need to get the straps on together. This bag needs to be in 
the customer's hands before noon tomorrow. Oh, do we want to do white? Yeah, we'll stick with white. All right. This is going to be noisy. You might want to turn your volume down a little bit because I'm going to jam on the strap right now. Okay. When you are sewing a strap together, here's a tip. You have your portion that's open and then you have your portion that's closed. Always start on your closed edge, your closed side. If you start here and things want to, you know, bunch up and don't align right, you're going to be in trouble. You'll have to open it back up. You won't have a nice flat strap. I'm just going to keep stopping, making sure everything's lined up. And just continue over to the next side and come back down the other side. Now, everybody has a strap preference on how you want to do your straps. You can simply leave it just like that where you have one line on each side. I like two lines on each side. I like the look of it. I feel more secure. Um, and then your opening, see how your opening can be pushed open with your finger? I don't like that. Um, so if you do lines, make sure you sew closer to the edge if that's how you want it. You know, one line on each, I meant. So you can get that open side nice and pinched shut but you want to make sure everything's lined up good so you catch it on the bottom side um so i do two lines on each side and then i like to go down the middle with a wavy line and sometimes i do two or three wavy lines but this is a nice stiff canvas material i said i think we're just going to go with one one wavy line down the center so a few more rounds and i might have to change my bobbin here enough to make it down one more time.
that's two lines. But again, I like to put that line down the center. I mean, what? How could that go crooked there? Let me see. Oh, I see. Gosh darn it. It stepped off a little bit on the back. Those two. I'm going to have to go over that one one more time. That sucks. Where the two, uh, where the pieces meet together. I was so close to the edge that my needle jumped off a little bit. That's how close I was to the edge. So it made the stitches look crooked. Can you see that? See how they look crooked right there? That's how close I was to the edge of that bottom, that bottom piece. It jumped off. It d does it there, and then it does it here. I was too close to the edge. So let me double check to see if I have it anywhere else. Nope. So all I got to do is just go back over that line. I don't have to, but I like my stuff to be as perfect as I can possibly make it for my customers. Oh, I thought I was all prepped for live show. What the heck's going on right now? I stayed up late last night prepping for this. I don't even have a bobbin ready. Now you gotta listen to me wind a bobbin. Oops. Everything gets dusty so quick. For those that don't know, I have a broken presser foot. That's what it says right here. Because I had a couple of these machines sitting on the floor. I had uh, three of them at one point in time. Two on the floor, one up on the table. Because I kept buying the same machine. But stuff kept going wrong with these other newer machines I was buying. This was an older model. Same model, but somewhere they started making it differently. Because the new one... The new ones I was buying, they were breaking the first day or the first week. And I mean, the whole bobbin case, like the metal part, like popped out of the whole machine. I had never seen anything like it. And it did it to two machines in a row. Unbelievable. There is only one thing that could cause that. That's bad machine work. Like someone's putting it together and it was done wrong. Or they're using cheaper parts. So this was an older one that I had for a while. And I wanted to get a new one because my press foot was broke. And it becomes a pain in my butt. But I came back to it. Old, old faithful. <laughs> Until I can afford a more expensive one. The Juki. So we have two bobbins wound. That's enough to go more, more than enough to get this done. Shouldn't have any more interruptions now. Knock on wood. There's a fuzz there. Seriously. being camera shy or what's going on? <laughs> oh my god. 
<laughs> what is going on right now? What am I missing something? What is it? What are you doing? This is crazy. I usually stick this in with no problem. It's like there's a fuzz or something getting in my way. Really? I just said we wouldn't have any more interruptions, isn't it? Or is it because I, I said you were an old machine? You're not an old machine. You're beautiful, baby. Come on, let me in. There we go. See? I just had to show her a little love. Mama loves you. We've done beautiful work together. Even if I get my new machine... You'll still stay on the table. There we go. You'll always have a place. I'm talking to my machine on YouTube Live. Yes, I am. Okay. So we're going to go right back down. This is kind of like what I call band-aids. Ba bandage. Ba <laughs> Something. Blah. Jeez, I can't talk to my Where's that from? Jeez Louise. It's you know, it's kind of like I'm jinxing myself because I'm saying, hey, I gotta get done. I want to do this fast. Blah blah blah. What is going on right now? I have never had so much trouble with a strap. Stop messing with me already. That's enough. Please. All right. I'm definitely going down the center now.
All right. I highly recommend checking your straps for imperfections, especially if you're selling this, making it for a customer. Go through it. Make sure everything's correct. These straps are complete. Thank goodness. All right. These pockets get installed into the interior. Yeah, we don't have much to do. I tried to prep as much as I could. I don't want to lose my pieces, so stay with me here. You know what? We're just going to take you right off the table. How about that? There. We're going to turn on the iron. All right, so before you add on your bottom panels to your main panels, if you have quilting to do, do your quilting. If you have, even if you want to quilt the bottom, just get the quilting down on the top. It's easier to maneuver a smaller piece than a big piece. Pocket. We have a pocket to install on the outside. So we're going to install that first before we add on the bottom. Now to do a pocket, I am going to go ahead and turn my camera around and see if I can get you guys on the angle that I want you. Bear with me. Bear with me. Down there. Yeah, it's not going to be a real. Here. I would have to. No, I have to move the legs. So I'll bring it up to the camera. So you lay your panel flat. You decide where you want your pocket. Okay. Um, we have four squares here. We want our pocket up towards the top. You can do a diagonal pocket. You can do a straight pocket. And you can go right over the two squares if you want and make it right smack in the middle. So I think, hmm. I think we're just going to go for the middle. So remember you have your side piece. So we want to make this as even as we can. So I like to kind of count my fingers in. That's three, four. Four and a half. It's about right there. All right. And with directional fabric, you want to make sure when it's in the bag and the person reaches in the pocket, you want the direction of the characters facing, facing the owner of the bag. Right? You don't want them to unzip the pocket and see your turtles upside down. So to make it correct like this, you want to start off with the right sides facing your right sides of your panel and your direction is going to upside down. Okay. Because we're going to end up sewing the zipper onto the upside down. And then we're going to pull it through the bag. And when we pull it through, this gets folded up and sewn together. So they'll unzip it. And when they unzip it, they see the turtles. Okay. So you start upside down. All right. And I like to, because you want to leave enough room at the top of the pocket to sew when you bring it together. So I like to start, I like to have my pocket start two inches, two to two and a half inches from the top. All right, so now we're going to get out our measuring board and we're going to measure this, make sure we're making straight lines.
You want to just take a pen or a pencil, marking tool, and mark a straight line. Move it down. Oh, it would help if my pen was working. Shit. Okay. You don't need to mark all the way across the fabric. You want to stay about an inch from the sides. Move the ruler down a quarter of an inch. Make another line. Quarter of an inch again. Make another line. So you should have three lines that are a quarter of an inch from each other. This is going to be your sew line. This is how you're going to get a nice straight pocket. Then you take the ruler and you, I go about an inch and a half to an inch and a quarter, sometimes only an inch, depending on how big of a piece I'm starting with. It looks like I need about an inch and a quarter. And then you just want to mark in between those lines. I will show you what it looks like when I get it stitched down. And then what other people like to do too is they like to draw a little arrow. Let me pin it down so I can show you. I don't pin down my stuff, but for anyone, if you want your pocket to stay exactly where you have it, pin it down. I usually just carefully carry it over to my machine. So I'm going to, all right. So this is what it should look like. You made those little triangles at the end. You're going to start sewing here. Sew all the way down. Come down to your next line. All the way back up. You're going to come down to the bottom line. Okay, the middle line is where we're going to cut. Sew all the way down and then you come up. Now when we make our cut with our scissors, this is where we're going to stop. You want to make sure you have like a triangular flap at the ends because that's what's going to tuck under and give yourself a perfect slim triangle for that zipper. Without that flap, you wouldn't be able to install the zipper. Okay, so I'm going to move the camera again. Well, I have to. This is my setup right now, guys. Sorry. All right, let's get this sewn together. This is the longest part of the whole bag right now because everything else is done. Forgot I got the blood suckers out. They like to suck my blood. One thing I always did, when you get ready to come down to that bottom line, I count my stitches. So when it comes to the other side, you're counting your stitches to make sure everything's even. So you can even just use your hand crank. That's one, two, three, four, five. And if I don't have, let's say that my fifth stitch ends up being right below my line. That's fine. I just follow it straight down the same way. You know, if it's if it's a hair below, then follow it a hair below all the way down. Here we go. All right. And then we're going to one, two, three, four, five. Oops, I've done that. Five. Come back around. All right, so we just sewed a triangle, I mean a rectangle. Clip your threads. Now, oh, my iron's about to stop on me. Of course, guys, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Everybody work together now. I'll do this on this camera. These are my snips. I only use these for my pockets and pockets only. They have a guard. 
take those off and then they also have a safety latch because they're, they're spring loaded okay so you take your piece here that you just did you fold that in half make sure that's in half and I make a little incision a little cut in the center I don't want to block the camera with my hands. And then I'm going to stick my blade in there. Now you're going to cut through those layers. And you're stopping right at the tip of your triangle. Flip it over. Cut the other side. Now the triangle, what we're going to do here, you're going to cut right up your triangle and everybody likes to say you got to cut as close as you can to those stitches without cutting into your stitches. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. I don't care who wants to argue with me out there. You don't want to cut too close. You don't want to get as close as you can get because when you flip it right side out, you can see your stitching sticking out. Even though you didn't cut into it, it look, looks awful. So when you make that cut, you want to make a nice close cut, but not as close as you can get, okay? You want to leave a little piece there, just a little tiny piece there for when you flip everything right side out. I, Because I'm like, oh, cut as close as you can get. I can get pretty darn close without cutting into my stitches. But then when you flip it, it just doesn't look right. And sometimes it messes it up if you cut really, really close like that. All right, so now is the part where you're going to pull the pocket through. Okay. Tuck everything down. This is why I have my iron on right now because I'm going to take this over there. And you can, this is what it looks like on the back pulling everything through okay I'll use some clips just to give you guys a visual here straighten everything out see now when we fold this up and sew this together this is where we're going to be able to see our tur turtles at the right direction okay but that's the last step all right so I'm gonna turn it back around now we have created an opening for a zipper okay I'm gonna go take this to the iron and just press it because I like that to be crisp stay tuned I'm right behind you so I can hear you talking about me I'm just joking I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with a little bit of steam because of it being flannel Steam, meaning my spray bottle. All right. I'm going to go ahead and move this out of the way. This flannel sticks to each other. Oh, there's my tabs for my wallet. So, I got it nice and crisp. See how the edges look more crisp? Crisp. Crispy. It's time to lay your zipper in there. Now, I have my foot, which is no fun. These go on the table. I already prepped my zipper. We're using a, like a tan color, khaki color zip. I think it looks good with the blues and browns. I mean, blues and greens. Um, this is where I have not seen anybody on YouTube do it the way I do it. Okay. Everybody uses double sided tape or they pin it down or they use a glue stick or 
whatever they do, they get it so that their zipper is staying in place and not moving. Okay. So you would take it, you know, you, you would glue it to the back there or use double sided tape and you get your zipper lined up in there and then you go and stitch around it. I just lay it under my machine. I use my hands to adjust it and I sew it on. Making sure you have enough of the zipper tape sticking out on the east and sticking out on the west. Because you got to sew over that. So you want to make sure it's not too short at one end and you shorten yourself. Bring that zipper into view. That's going to also be your guide. That's part of the trick. With the broken presser foot, this is a pain in the butt for me because I have to lift this foot and slide my work in. And you want to kind of keep everything nice and snug about an eighth of an inch from that zipper teeth. So, 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 here we go. Come on, be friendly, please. Oh, and the pocket is wrapped around the front of the panel. I used to roll this up and clip it. You know, I'll do it here for video purposes. Just to keep everything together and out of your way for when you're turning it. The flannel is a little stickier than cotton. It likes to stick to every other fabric, like with the flannel on flannel. So maybe that'll help me a little bit here. Um, I don't just sew right over these teeth. Sometimes um, these are plastic teeth, but they have broken my needles before because it's a number five. You know, it's a nice heavy-duty zip. I love them on my bags. I, you have to hand crank them. All right. Bring it around. See, my zipper stays in place. I stitched it down there on the top. So you just have to kind of guide it. Use your hands, you know, make situate everything for after each turn. No double-sided tape here. No glue stick here. Glue stick here. I'm having chest pains. I'm having chest pains for like an hour. Oh, I don't know if it's my like if I got gas or something up in my chest or what's going on there all right we're going to pull the little bit while we come to the end Adjustments. Use your hands over the teeth. I'm just going to continue on and do another another circle around it just to secure that zipper tape down. Sometimes I do wavy lines at this part um, to match the wavy quilting pattern that I have put into the bag.
lift that presser foot, get that zipper out of the way. to flip it over any extra zipper tape that's hanging along my sewing edge I cut it off and then I burn it I burn those zipper ends zipper tape ends because they do fray, and over time, you just don't know. You wouldn't want that fraying and coming into your stitch line and wreaking havoc on your customer later down the line. And then I try to find my start and stop. Just kind of hold it up to the light and see if you see any thread sticking off. Right there it is. Kind of give it a little burn. But remember, flannel burns, flannel browns. It browns almost instantly, so you cannot hold a lighter to flannel. It doesn't matter what color it is, it will brown. And that brown doesn't come off. It doesn't come off in the washer. It does not, you would have to sew over it. It does not come off. Like you have to sew over the brown to like satin stitch it to cover up the ugly brown. Okay, so on the back, here's our top, our zipper. I like to close the zipper for this part. We're going to take the bottom of that pocket and we're going to fold it right up. And we're going to pinch her at the top. This is where you can pen or you can use your clips. As you see, we only have about an inch on this piece. But we got here, you know, so I like to sew about a half an inch. I start, I start right here on the inside. So I'm going to flip this around. I hold this down. I put it on my machine and I sew straight down, move this over, sew straight down. And then I stop. I take my needle off and I come over and I start at the other side. I come up with a straight stitch and then I take it, turn it to zigzag and I zigzag the edges and I go all the way around the edges. Um, we're not going to sew the bottom. This is how, because the bottom is how we're going to birth this bag through this pocket so we're actually going to cut open the bottom I'm coming over to the other side. Making sure to go back and forth even beyond my starting point because we're going to be cutting off that bottom. So I want to secure the sides really good. And, you know, a lot of stress gets put into the pockets of bags. People put keys. They put, you know, um, different objects in there. And it, and it puts stress on the sides and the corners and, you know, it sucks when you get a hole in your pocket. Well, I'm the designer of this bag, and my pockets are anti-holy. <laughs> this doesn't sound right. They're very blessed. I mean, anti, they're not going to get a hole in them. Just gonna jump off, and now I'm gonna go to zigzag and go around the entire perimeter. This I do this to all my pockets, but it's especially important if you're working with flannel because flannel likes to fray.
All right. Now I'm just going to clean up some of the excess off of here. I do not cut as close as I can get to my stitching like others. Um, I'm going to keep referencing back to others because I watch a lot of YouTube videos. I'm not insulting anybody. I'm not trying to put down anyone else's work. I'm just going off of what I've seen, what I heard, what I've learned, and this is my way of doing it. So I'm just using different ways as a comparison. I do not mean any harm. Whatever works for others, works for others. This is what works for me. Now I'm going to cut a very, because this is not a really deep pocket. I like my pockets deep. It's actually a perfect size. So we're going to cut off a real small piece at the bottom here, leaving us, uh, leaving us enough room to flip in those ends and close, stitch it up when the bag is done. So real skinny. Real skinny. Like, see how skinny that is? And that was folded in half. All right, so now that's our opening. That is how we're going to birth the bag. When we're done, we will just um, tuck the flaps in. You know, this will be right side out. We will tuck the flaps in and then sew down it. Now, for the remainder of this project, you want to make sure you remember to leave this pocket open. But when I am putting the bag together, I like it to be closed. Because it because of the opening, it can cause, you know, maybe this won't sit straight. It's just different reasons. And look at when we peek in our pocket, look at our turtles. They're right side up. Hello, peekaboo turtles. Peekaboo. Peekaboo turtles. I love turtles. Okay. <gasps> We're already going into an hour. Jeez Louise, Papa Cheese. Okay, so. So, 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 let's sew on our bottom panels. Let's see how many times am I going to do that before I lift up a panel. Let's sew on our bottom panels. You know, I have to also put on one of my name tags. Can't forget that. And I am forgetful. So I'm going to clip that right here so mama don't forget. There we go. As you see here, there is about a half an inch of stabilizer missing from the edge. That is for my seam allowance. I mean, that is to avoid, that's for my seam allowance. <gasps> just, just slap me now. That is so when I sew it on, it avoids the bulk. Because this is already stabilized. This has already got the, you know, the fusible fleece. So we don't need double fleece right here. We don't need double layers. You know, and then when we fold it down and we stitch down, it just, it avoid, it's less bulky. So at this point, you want to make sure this is all trimmed up nice too. <gasps> Remember I made that same mistake before? Oh, right. We don't have a top piece. We don't have a top piece. That's right. Okay. All right, here we go. Half inch seam allowance. <laughs> Make sure your pocket is out of the way in case you have like a long pocket and it's reaching down here. If you are afraid of catching it, you can always flip it up and just put a clip in it right there to keep it out of your way. threads we're going to fold it down and we're going to top stitch along the, uh, the top there top stitch along the top this is a heavier duty fabric that i used for the bottom like it's a cotton twill or yeah i think it's cotton twill so you kind of want to sew slower so the stitches are nice and straight and even. And... Seems like when you go fast on the cotton twill, it stresses it.
nice pretty top stitching nice and straight you can see that on camera now. one and two I always go two stitches up roll it up bring it around town and back down Main Street We're going to go nice and slow, like a hot rod, or maybe not a hot rod, maybe a classic car. Hot rod, you want to go fast, right? Like we're driving a 59 Chevy. All right, I'm going to add a little bit of my touch to it. What I like to do, this part isn't so thick, so I can probably go a little faster. So I did my two top stitching lines on that seam. Now when I move down, it's not I'm not on that seam no more, so it's just the uh, cotton twill. So I can go a little bit faster. And what I'm doing is I'm going to add a couple quilt lines going back and forth. I like to do two at two at two. I just like the look of the two by two. Um, I'm going to do them straight. Show you what that looks like when I'm done. I can hear my son coming home from work. Oh, come on, get out of there. I had a loop created. Hi, son. Hey. How was your night? It was good. I think Monica's going to be calling around 1030. She wants to talk to you. Monica's my oldest daughter. She lives about 300, 250 to 300 miles away from us, up north, Michigan. Now, this is where I use my presser foot for my guide. I eye up the space um, between the line, the top stitch line and my presser foot. The distance is like a pinky finger width or an index, a pointer finger. And I just try to eye it up and I go all the way down. I don't use a ruler. Um, and I always get complimented on my craftsmanship and my straight lines. So that is something that I am blessed with. Um, not toot my own horn. I'm just, just talking about it. I didn't, to me, I didn't realize it was a thing. <laughs> I thought it was normal that everybody could do it. I believe everybody could do it if they put their mind to it. Just something I've always been good at. What I'm doing is I'm going back and forth. I'm only I'm only doing one stitch length different between each line. And then between the two lines is about an inch, a full inch. Now this will be about where I start creating my come on, I got stuck in the wire there. 
my cords. Stuff. Um, this is about where I'll start cutting into my gusset. So I'm going to go ahead and end this beautiful design here. Show you what that looks like. See how that looks? Pretty cool, hey? So when the bag is all done, the gussets are un, you know pulled under, you'll have these sets of double lines. It gives the bag a you know different kind of look. So I don't add my tag until the very end, just in case like I have like a loopy thread, I mean a loose thread or a, a piece of bunched up fabric, something may have happened along the line. You can use your tag to cover it up as long as it's in a safe, a good spot where you can place your tag. Um, I rarely have had to do that. Knock on wood, please don't let that happen tonight. Um, but that is why I keep that for last. Okay. So now we're going to add on our second bottom piece here to our main panel. And then we will square it up, trim it up, and make sure, and then square up our liner, make sure our liner is the same size, and then add our pockets to our liner, add our zipper to our liner, and then the piece that's all coming together. So we went an inch below this bottom line and we did three sets of two, three sets of double lines. All right. So that's what's coming up next. All right there. Then I go back one stitch, and that is my sew line for the next one coming up. Coming back down. You just keep it as close as you can to that, but you're leaving a little gap. Small enough where you can leave like a toothpick in there. Seriously, having chest pains. I wonder if I need to burp or something. It's hurting all up in here, my on my left side.
this is the last one. Now I'm going to go ahead and move my work over and I'll pick you up and put you up on the table. I'm going to go ahead and prep everything here. I'll leave the zipper panels, take the strap, get that cut. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, I think I do need to burp. Feeling a lot of pressure in my, like right in here. And it's like, We had pizza for dinner. And I probably, need, you know, it's a lot of bread. Probably need a burp. Something's going on. Hope it ain't like a heart attack or nothing like that. All right. Who's in the kitchen? No one. Eric, is Eric there? Um. Do you see my finger telling you to come here, please? Oh. I thought I heard somebody walking up here. Where's Randy? Uh, he was still in his room. Give, uh, you know her. She already had the other stuff, you know that, right? Okay, just and some, get, uh, some cold water. Yeah. Thank you, dear. Oh. All right, I'm just going to trim this up. It looks like now I gauge I like to line up my panel that I just sewn on my bottom. I, I, I line that up. So I'm at the seven inch mark, seven inch mark. You know, if anything else needs to be squared up, you square it up from there. That's that's your guide because you want that to be straight on. It looks like we can take this down to 18 and a quarter. After all the quilting and sewing, it was 18 and three quarters. Now it's sitting in between 18 and a quarter and 18 and a half. So we're just going to take it down to 18 and a quarter. Oh, for crying out loud, come on. That thick part there. Turn it sideways. Again, you want to be mindful of your pocket. Like if you have a longer pocket, you don't want to get in the way. So I'm lining up my bottom piece like a guide. Come down here. It looks like that's uneven. So we're going to take it down. Just take it down a quarter. Chop it off a quarter. Now, once I've chopped off that quarter, and I know that this has been all evened up, I'm going to pull that down, and now we measure. Making sure everything's lined up there. And you got to remember where you started, where your guide was. Like, I had it at my 7-inch mark, and it just came down to the 1-inch mark, and I cut a quarter off. So you got to remember that. Let me switch my uh, clip my name tag clipped to the side for right now. So this is definitely uneven up top. So it looks like we're going to take this down to the nearest, which is 19 and a quarter. So now we're down to 18 and a quarter by 19 and a quarter. That's our size. All right, and this panel is done. 18 and a quarter by 19 and a quarter. I'm just going to trim off that little bit of fusible fleece. 
Now I'm not going to cut my gusset yet because I like to do all my pieces before I cut my gussets. I've learned my lesson on that one the hard way. Again, start with your bottom piece you just sewn on. Line it up on your board. Take this down to 18 and a quarter. See, the other side looks it looks straight to me. If you feel like your other side isn't straight, then you can just take a little bit off of this side and then take a little bit off that side to get to the proper measurement that you need to get to. I'm comfortable with this edge. So I'm only going to cut off of this edge. As long as my bottom piece is lined up, that's all that matters. That fusible fleece. Once your board starts getting all that stuff stuck in there, it just starts going to crap. Yuckiness. All right, we're going to turn. Now, remember we left our bottom piece. We started at the 7-inch mark. Line it up nice and straight. Come down here. Repeat the same exact steps. So I took it to the one and a quarter inch mark and that's where I cut it at. So I cut off so that it lines up there. measurement. We want 19 and a quarter. All right. So we got 18 and a quarter by 19 and a quarter on both panels. Sleepy voice is kicking in. All right, so we're going to kick, cut this down. I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit off each side. So this is nice and straight. Slide it over. Now our width is 18 and a quarter. It's a little easier to slice through that than it is the exterior. Now we turn it. See what we're working with here. So what, I want to cut off some of the top and bottom. So I'm going to come down and just remove about the quarter inch off the bottom. Always check what you have first before you go cutting and see how much you room you're working with. I had enough room to take off from the bottom and now the top. 19 and 4. Your liner should always be about a quarter less than height wise. Okay. So. Um, another thing you can do to mark your top from your bottom if you want to set it aside, you can fold this in half and cut a little little marker and that tells you that, hey, this is my bottom, this is my side, that's my top. So now we're going to cut our gussets. I'm doing three inch gussets. I know a true gusset is supposed to be three inches from the seam line. 
But this, so I mean, technically this wouldn't be a full three inch gusset the way that I do it, but this is just the way that I've been doing it since I started. And I'm comfortable with it this way. Carefully keep those pieces together when you're turning. Let's go ahead and get it out. I saved my squares. These can be zipper tabs or save them for an applique project. Definitely zipper tabs for me. And they, they're the color of the lining, so you can actually use your gusset squares for your zipper tabs for that same project. All right, so we have that cut out. We're going to flip over the first one. Get that out of the way, should I, I should say. Oh, you know what? Let's just go ahead and cut these gussets and get that done. So you can just take your panel and line it up with any line on your board. It doesn't matter. Make sure it's aligned. Get yourself a little marking tool. You want to mark three inches in. Use a colored pencil, chalk, pencil, pen, whatever you want at this point. We're going to cut it out anyways. Just don't draw too big of a line where it goes into your work. These ones I, I keep sometimes because I feel like they can be used for future projects, but right now. Now, when you do your top stitching quilting work like I do, and I just cut into one of my lines, I'm just going to burn that thread just to secure it. And I'm going to do it on both sides. Be careful when you make a lighter to the feasible fleece because it is flammable. Or it melts really quick anyways. That just secures those. And they're going to get secured again when you sew on them. So we'll probably. But Mama likes to be extra secure. me almost three hours last night to prep all these pieces and here I thought I was going fast are done. Now back to our liner. I'm going to eye up this pocket here. Give myself two pens. Bless you. Bless you. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's five and a half from that side. And five and a half from that side. I am one bad manager. Four and three quarters. Mm. Little tiny hair off. Go up a little bit. There we go. All right. I'm going to pen this in place. Now, 
When you're pinning a pocket down, you want to make sure you put a pin in that holds it vertically and horizontally. So it holds it in position on both, both ways that it could slip. All right, the last panel, liner. We got our crocodile fabric here. This is our top. I normally do a fold down and that's how I do my pockets here. But because it was a flannel, it's really thick. So I just stitched it and, you know, stitched it to make it look like a top of a pocket. Well, it is a top of a pocket, <laughs> but you know what I mean. And here again, I just kind of eye it up. So you use your bottom gussets to measure upwards. So I am an, an inch and three quarters from that bottom line. Look up here, make sure everything else is lining up here. Looks like that can go up. Remember it's flannel, so it sticks to the material. These will make nice pockets for the baby bottles. So we're gonna try to go ahead, cause this is only 18 inches. We're gonna go ahead and try to get three, three pockets. I might wanna do that now. I might wanna mark. So I'm going to sew my V. Let's see, I always sew a little side V on these. About there. So my V. About there. So from there, can I get six inches? Okay, I'm going to use that crocodile as my guide. That was about right there. Nope, so I'm going to say five and a half. So there's my half. Two, three, four, five. That can be enough to stick your hands into. You want to make sure you can reach your hands down in it. You don't um, want to make pockets where you can't reach your hand down into it. That's, that's ridiculous. Um, hmm. Let's see here. That's about half. I don't normally do this with the pen, not on the outside of my material like this, but I really want to get three pockets. And if I don't have a wide enough panel, um, you know, those pockets can become slim very quickly and yeah, they'll fit a bottle, no problem, but you can't fit your hand into it. And I feel like, why would you want to have a pocket that you cannot stick your hand into the bottom of to get if something falls to the bottom? Another thing I see a lot of ladies do on these shows to make bags, they make pockets that you can't put your hands in. You can't get your hand into it. And I'm like, what are you doing? You can't put your hand in there. And if you try to force it, you're going to rip it because they only put one or two lines of sewing over it. They don't secure it. I'm just scraping. Don't mind me. I just watch so many things and I'm like, Lordy, 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 Lordy. They might have thought about it afterwards, but okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and take care of my strap right now. We're cutting it in half because we're going to have double straps. So that's done. All right, we're ready. This is not sewn down. So let me move the camera first. I mean, it's not pinned down. I'm going to gently just carry this over. Oh, 
I'm going to go ahead and pop a pen in there. See here, we got a little extra hanging over here. The side too. Okay. <sighs> All right. This is where I like to do a little satin stitch right at the top. I added security and I like the look of it. Just says, hey, I mean, our threads. Front and back. I already took it off. So now I'm going to go ahead and fold this over so I can get it in my machine. Look for my marks that I created down here. I made a real small one. So where is it? Right there. Okay.
just so I'm not wasting my thread and you know I just like to cut I just pull it a little bit give it a cut look underneath give it a cut and I can pull it off without having to pull off a long string remember flannel burns really easy I mean it browns so when I'm burning these threads I need to do it quickly on the flannel side quickly and cautiously that I'm not burning up my flannel Okay, that, that panel's done. Let's see if we can reach our hands into it. Look at that. Perfect. 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 All right, now, what I need to do, though, I didn't, I realized I didn't do it on the other side. See what I did? I, I sewed, like, a little triangle right here. So when I go to sew this liner together, I'm going to know not to go past that. I'm not going to go past that triangle. I'm going to stay within that guideline when I'm going down my pockets. If I was to go past that, then it's going to make it so you can't stick your hand in your pocket. Okay. So same thing over here. I have to, that's where I marked it with a pen. It's that little black line right there. That's, that's, I got to create a triangle right there. And that's my, that's my guide. So don't go past that. So that's done. So that's another tip right there. Again, I've never seen anybody else do that. I think I would be useful in the YouTube world. Helpful, useful. Now with this pocket, I'm going to start at the far right side. So around. I like to do that little triangle here. Not only can you use it as a guide, but it's also a way to secure a pocket from being floppy. So if you do like a little side slant line on each side, but don't make it too big because then you make it so your pocket isn't, you know, the size you intended it to be. Just a little bit and it adds extra security and it makes it so that it doesn't flop out. And be cautious because remember we folded down the top, so this is a thicker, a thicker seam. I'm gonna go ahead and knock out my triangle now. one triangle on I'm just going to follow my sew line that's already there from when we closed it up just to get it down once it's down then I'll go along um, beyond that and above it and where where else I want to sew you know to get it looking good <laughs>
I'm going to go ahead and take my pins out. I like to go back and forth when I'm towards the top. It makes it look like an embroidery stitch. It makes it nice and bright and white. So whatever color you know, thread you're using. Um, just adds that extra look and security. I'm going to do my triangle. And then we're going to go back around. But I'm not going to follow that seam line. I'm going to do another one. Remember the opening of this pocket was on the side, so I want to make sure that gets closed up. Look, and it did us a little bunching, so we want to make sure we sew that up. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and cut these corners. Give the pocket a different look. Cut the corners. all the way up on that triangle, the first triangle, because I know it's secure, it's thick. I don't need to go up all the way on that. There's a new song um, by a, a, a guy or a group called Whiskey Myers. It's rock and roll. I hear it when I'm listening to the rock and roll station when I'm sewing. It's called Gasoline. I like that song. It like hypes me up, gives me energy, makes me want to get up and exercise or something. <laughs> okay. So that's how it looks. That's what I meant by cutting my corners. So I went ahead and just slanted the corners on the bottom. There's our top triangle. So we have a nice secure pocket. Perfect size for baby bottle or a sippy cup or, you know, it's deep enough. It could be a foam pocket, whatever mom and dad intend to use it for. So this gives this bag a total of four pockets. Now let's go ahead and bring these two panels together. We're almost done. Side, so I want to make sure I'm not going past my triangle. forth when I'm going over a pocket. I'm going 
going to go ahead and zigzag these edges because of the flannel and me having those. It's, it's not a full half inch so, um, seam allowance, and I, I just don't feel comfortable with that. I'm not going to uh, zigzag along the whole thing. I'm just going to start right above the pocket area, make sure that's secure, go all the way down and secure the bottom as well. So any stress that is put on the pockets, it'll be extra secure. So that's done. Pulls up the bottom. To change our bobbin, I can see that. Um, I think I got enough to do one of the gussets. Remember, when you pull your gussets open, you want to make sure your seams are matched up. And one flap is facing east, one flap is facing west, or north or south, whichever way your rear end is sitting. And just backed it up doing a little bit of a zigzag there because I do zigzag my gussets. Um, I backed it up because I knew I was about to run out anyway, so I wanted to use every bit of that thread. Good thing that we prepared two for this bag. back and finish that zigzag. <laughs> Did that just, oh, there it is. I do have a box. It's an old box, like a baby diaper box or pull-up box that I use for garbage. When it gets full, I empty it out, set the box back down. For those of you that are wondering if I'm just throwing my, tra my tra 
trash on the floor. I am not. I got, I love buying, searching eBay and finding treasures, especially with fabric, uh, thread lots, zipper lots. Um, you know, you might have a quilter, somebody that passed away, and the family member is sitting on an abundance of stuff. Don't know what to do with this, so they sell it dirt cheap. Um, or somebody that just used to sew all, you know, and quilt and doesn't do it any, excuse me, doesn't do it anymore. You just, I love finding those hidden treasures. And I recently found brand new, a four yard cut of a black and white print. Now who can't use black and white fabric in the bag world? You can use it as a liner, straps, pockets, anything. Oh my goodness. A four yard cut. And let me tell you, this fabric actually feels like a Kona cotton or like a Robert Kaufman. It's a heavyweight cotton. Guess how much? Four yards. Ready? Nine dollars. Yes, nine bucks. Nine bucks plus shipping. And I want to say they charged seven dollars for shipping. Four yards of fabric with the shipping. All together, sixteen dollars is what we paid. Um, if you went to Joann's and you got a quality premium cotton quilt weight you know uh heavyweight sticker cotton weight fabrics um you're gonna pay anywhere from 12.99 to 16.99 a yard and i got four yards can i get a amen poor lady had it up for auction and the opening bid was nine dollars and i'm like i'm gonna no and there's one day left when i bid on it and i'm like no one's bid on this why not why not so i'm like when i when i bid it on i was you know once once i started that bid somebody else would go after it there's just no freaking way that i was going to be able to get away with that and sure, and sure enough, a day later, I got a notification from eBay for me to pay for my item that I won at auction. And I'm like, what? Cannot believe it. And it arrived today in the mail. It got here really quick. And I'm, I'm like, wow, it's beautiful. I didn't know it was a good quality one. I just figured, you know, four yards is four yards for nine dollars you can't beat that even if it's a like a um, quilter showcase you know which by the way everybody knocks quilter showcase i love quilter showcase there ain't nothing wrong with that fabric um okay off subject back to the bag i forgot to make my zipper tabs i have a green piece which matches the green in the print and i have a blue so they're going to be green and blue opposite ends i'm going to make my zipper tabs we are almost done, guys. I'll be known as the lady who sews bags and makes the longest videos in the world. You want to watch a Spitzy Banger video, you got to take a day off work. No, I'm just joking. I got to get into some editing skills. And matter of fact, I was going to purchase uh, editing software um this weekend i have ones um i have iMovie, which is free on my app on my apple iphone um, but i have to record the videos from my phone in order to use it well i don't i don't like that because the videos that are recorded from the phone are small like they they black out the sides and stuff and I like this webcam that I have. It's got a wider range, wider view. So um, I think I got Filmshare. Um, and then there's 
Movavi. I don't know if I'm saying that right. You know, I have to ask my daughter because I know she was. She purchased some, and I mean, she had some, and she knows which ones are good and which ones not. Hi, Turkey. Give me a hug. Let me see your arm. Um. Okay. Let's see. Hold on, guys. Time out. I got to deal, deal with my baby here. Some of this is a little too. Any scissors? No, I'm just gonna loosen it up. I'm gonna wrap it back up. Oh, yeah, it's... the people who commented was me and where they were. Who's Chim Chim? Chim Chim. Like the tape did more damage. Oh. I want it to stay on. I just um it can't be that tight, you understand? Yeah. Let me see. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna loosen this up a little bit. Okay. Loose. We're gonna make it loose. Nice and easy. You're sleepy. You got sleepy eyes. Sleepy eyes. Yeah, it's not so tight, okay? okay. Oh. Yeah, but I don't want you to scratch oh. your arm. Oh. I don't want you to scratch your arm. Oh. You want it off? Yes. Don't scratch your arm, okay? Okay? Don't. Can you say okay? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't scratch. Bad. Yeah, it's bad. You may give yourself a boo-boo. Uh, my five-year-old daughter is on the spectrum and she has dairy allergies and she recently must have came in contact with something in her food we try to be careful here we need this one to stay on this one stays. Oh. no look at the bandage it needs to stay on see <gasps> yucky that has to stay covered you're going to give it air. You can't scratch it. You can't. Are you going to be in my spot? Yeah. But Make like sure. It's dark and like I know that she doesn't scratch it when I'm there. Please. And then I could put a bandage on when she falls asleep. Yeah. Okay. okay. Keep it clean. It makes mama sad if you have a boo boo. Okay. I love you. You gonna be okay? Let me see it. Let me see. Do you want some stuff on it? No, no, no. You want some coconut oil? No, no, no. Okay. Make sure she doesn't scratch for the love of God, please. Please just watch her, okay? So I went to take her into the doctor on Monday. So really quick, my daughter has a milk allergy, a dairy allergy. Uh, her, her arms, the insides of her arms gets like what looks like eczema. You know, doctors say, oh, it's eczema. No, it's her reaction to the, to the, to dairy. We have almond milk. She does not get any cheese or yogurt or anything like that. We make sure. Well, something, something happened a week ago, and you know, I think I think one of the girls. I mean, it wasn't a week ago. It was a few weeks ago. 
One of the girls gave her milk and her cereal. Of course, they got yelled at. Hey, she can't have milk. What are you doing? So she has her almond milk. Um, again. So, you know, we're, make, we're making sure she's not getting any dairy, but she's this flare up isn't going away. And between today and yesterday, it just seems to have gotten even worse. And she scratches it. Well, now tonight she scratched it to where a part of her skin was like raw. So in order to stop her from scratching it, I needed to cover it up. So I, I, I all we had was some sports tape, which does not stick to the skin whatsoever. Um, we had, we laid down, we put triple antibiotic ointment over it. And then uh, put down some gauze and then wrapped up her arms so she would leave it alone because she you know you just take your eyes off of her for a second she's rubbing it she's taking her arm and rubbing it on her knee and the blanket and scratching and it, it's it's making um yeah so that poor thing but she cannot stand for a bandage to be on her arm looks pretty bad. I might have to take her into the doctor. She's her baby. So I just do the half, the half X. That's how it looks. Down here, I'm just laying it right on top of the bag. And you can see if you're going to have any tails. Does someone have a little tail, but not much? I don't like them to hang out of the bag. You know, they can hang in the bag, but not too much outside the bag. That don't look cool. There's the blue one. All right, so now we're going to lay this inside of our diaper bag. Teeth side up. Make sure you just take those tails and point them down. Keep them out of the way. At this point, I've done it in my other videos. I said it in my other videos, I just eye it up. Um, I look it from the seam to the zipper panel. You know, do I, it looks about a two inch box right there. And on this side, huh, about a two inch box. It actually looks like it's perfect right now. Let me see. Let's double check that. This angle. 
it's all darker because of the blues. I'm going to move a little bit to the right, just a little. All right, there we go. I'm just going to put one clip to hold it in place. And then come up here to the sewing machine. I already removed the clip because the needle can hold it all down and hold it in place, I mean. Pull that raw edge up to the up to your liner raw edge and repeat the same process. Make sure it looks about even on both sides, even distance. Bring it up. Zip it. Tuck those flaps down, tails down. All right, and then the liner is ready. Grab your main panels. Um, I need to go ahead and put that my label on. Um, I usually put it at the bottom here this gets sewn in but sometimes I don't you know this is a gusset it gets down it's not noticeable so if I have like a plain square like this green one has has actually like a design on it the blue one does too but not as much as the green so maybe if I lay it here that looks professional um, even like that looks cool I kind of like the look of it Like that. Spitzybanger.com. Um, this side has the pocket, the other side don't. So sometimes I like to keep my label on the same side. Once in a while, I go over and put something on the other side. So it kind of gives it two sides. You know, one side with the pocket, one side with the label. Um, I'm kind of torn right now. I'm thinking we're going to go ahead and. I think we're going to go ahead and do the other side. Something's just telling me to do the other side. So let's do it right here where it's going upward like this. And then I turn my stitch length and width down to about two, two and a quarter. Just works out perfect as far as stitching around it goes. I like the way it equals out on the sides. Cut your thread tail. Make 
and go up one more. See, I can go right up to the edge there because I got that small stitching. That's what I meant to say, and that's what I like. I like the look of that right against the edge. Don't forget to turn these back up. Remember what I said earlier about cutting, cutting your string, then taking it off. It kind of saves you, saves you on thread a little bit over time, you know. All right, we're going to go ahead and just singe the back. For any of you that are watching and you are under age, please do not get a lighter. You do not need a lighter. It is not necessary. Use a lighter under adult supervision. Some fabrics may be more flammable than others. You don't want to take a lighter to a fabric and then have it, you know, whew, go up in flames really fast on you. That would be scary. You could get hurt. So use a lighter with adult supervision, please. Mama said so. Mama knows best. Okay, now we have to remember to leave our zipper pocket open. Do we need that part yet? Oh, no. Jeez, Louise. Time out. Time out. I almost forgot the straps. Okay. We, oh, don't go nowhere on me, Mr. Clippy. Where'd you go? I can't see how it could fall upwards. I feel like the floor is on an angle. All right. I don't see it right now. Great. I only own 10 Wonder Clips. <laughs> down, down, down to nine. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> This part, we're going to zigzag our strap in place. I'm going to eye it up. What you could do is you could fold your bag in half to find your center. Fold it in half, find your center, and you put a little clip, like you're clipping off just a tiny bit. And when you open it up, you get yourself a little V. That's your center mark. You can use that as a gauge when putting your straps on without taking it to the measuring board or using a measuring tape. So we're going to find the center. Get those off there. Okay, so we'll do that just for the video purpose. And then you have a top. You have a top and a bottom side of your strap. So do you want the top to show when it's laying down or when the people are carrying it, do you want the top to show? So that's also a decision you have to make when you are placing your strap. Make sure when you place your strap that nothing is twisted, everything's laying flat, laying the same direction. Excuse me. I like to go about three inches from the sides. So once you eye that up, let's see. Once you get that, you can actually use your first panel as your guide to do your second one. I think that's about right there. Let me see if I fold this in half. Look, look at how they're both the same. That's just eyeing it up. Woohoo! Go, mama. Go, mama. Make sure your pocket's out of the way.
Now, some of the strings are so short because I'm, you know, I keep starting and stopping and starting and stopping. If they're really short, I don't bother with cutting them off. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my guide. My strap is my guide here like I just did. So you lay. Here's our panel with the straps. Okay. Lay this panel face up right on top so you can see where your straps are take your strap and just line it up put a clip there make sure it's not twisted run your hand down it bring it up so it matches the other side there we go they're both the same all right, bring it over to be zigzagged on. This bag is already sold. If you wanted a bag made for you in any print, color, design, any style, um, baby bag like this my prices start at 60 65 like this one would be 60. so you can go to my website www.spitsybanger.com or you can message me through youtube my website, YouTube, Facebook, um, and you can place an order. All orders are prepaid. I ship anywhere in the U.S. I do not ship outside the U.S., not right now. Um, we would have to build some trust first. I just have gotten burned one too many times in the past. I have one out of state, out of country customer. She's in Switzerland or Sweden. And uh, she's only bought one thing, so I never had to deal with her again, but she was right on time. But I uh, just to ship from Amer Michigan, Michigan, USA to Sweden. Was it Switzerland, Sweden? Um, it was $28. And it was for a small crossbody. All right, now we're going to put our panels together and sew them together the same way we did the liner and you do want to make sure that your pocket is unzipped and you cut a hole in your pocket you're good to go and then you want to come down here and make sure your bottom piece the canvas there is lined up that is the only thing that we have to line up on this bag everything else will just fall into place okay using the same seam allowance that you used on your liner. Very important. zigzag or nothing like that on my exterior because I like to be able to open up my flaps butterfly style for when I'm bringing, bringing them together. Just going to open this up. Oh, see, 
Let's skip the beat. Let's skip the beat on me. Gosh darn it. Oh. Nope. I'm sorry. I have to open that back up. I can't. It's not lined up there, and I can't do it. I cannot send that like that. It was just, see how it's just off? It's off by less than an eighth of an inch. Just going to have my freaking name on it. It's not aligned, but it's a lot better than it was the first time. It's almost, I mean, it's right there. I can't. bottom stitching on this I went ahead and went right back up for security. Where are you going son? Okay. Okay, we're on um we're on YouTube live son. Jeez. Let's not talk about our personal lives. He recently got in some trouble here and such a good kid. He's always been a good kid. Just he really made a bad decision recently. I'm just gonna take this off and check that side. Instead of going all the way up that is what I should have did with the other one. Much better. Beautiful. Okay. Let's go ahead and just start over. Got it. Ain't nothing wrong with that for security. about the squares lining up or anything like that because it's you know it's patchy it's fine we have that side that side piece there anyways i think yep that one don't matter <laughs> I go 
grocery store, post office. Not tonight, but I was supposed to. It's been a busy day. Because of this being that thick cotton twill, I'm going to go over that line one more time. Open up your exterior, your exterior seams, you open up but, butterfly style. Whereas the interior, we do the east and west. This one gets opened up and lined up. I'm gonna go ahead and just do the other side. That way they're all opened up for me. Looks like that. Line up your seams. Open up butterfly style, pinch them together, and then clip it right there. And then you sew across and you go back and forth. And then I also do a zigzag beyond that just for added security. Go. Before you approach the center, you might want to take a peek underneath. Even if you have it clipped, um, sometimes that flap, the seam will want to go, you know, go the wrong way, um, and it causes chaos right there. But these seem to be laying pretty flat. time when you're going over the centers like that. Just going to pull that off. Go back over with a zigzag. side. And we're almost done, guys. I said it'd be real quick. Hour and a half. Jeez Louise. Two and a half hours. Well, I'm just doing live videos, putting bags together, so you're welcome to watch, you know. Um, I guess I gotta make them more specific. I guess. Make a video closing up the gussets. Make a video doing a pocket like other people do, I guess. It's, it takes a long time to make a bag.
Okay, right side of the bag is going to get pulled out. You got to flip it right side out. Corners. Yeah, I made another big bag. Nice big, nice big diaper bag. Alligators and turtles. Zipper pocket with the turtles there. Let's get this baby put inside its liner. Mama's getting sleepy. Tuck little straps in. Reach your hand in there and make sure the straps are facing the right direction and run your hand down them on the inside to make sure they're laying flat. Like you don't want them coming up and causing any problems. Not adjust this seam, side seam with the side seam. Over to your other side seam. Always do your side seams first. Then you can make the adjustments afterwards. It's time to do that pull check. stand up. Yeah, okay, it's going on this side. There's a little slack right here I found. Not much, not enough for me to have to, I mean, very, very little. It's enough to get put into there. Okay. All right, now let's get this baby put together. The grand finale. Remove the bed of your machine. Again, make sure that zipper pocket is unzipped and your pocket is open so you have a hole to berth your bag through. comes to the straps I like to go back and forth for reinforcement when it 
come to the side seam, even though you got your clip there, you want to make sure everything is opened up and laying flat. That's what creates bulk when you flip the bag upside out, those bulky sides. Sometimes they're almost impossible to get through your machine. Comes another strap. seam open it up started cut your threads cut your threads time to birth the bag now remember we left the opening in our pocket we're gonna reach in there and we're gonna grab why am I reaching in that pocket I don't want that pocket We're going to grab the bottom where I can feel the can the canvas bottom and we're going to gently pull. Now this is an outside pocket so we want to be careful. You don't want it to rip. You don't want to put too much stress on it. So you're just going to take your time. If you have like a faux leather bag, um, a real bulky material, you might want to choose a different pocket and not birth it through your main outside pocket. Um, I have had where the edge of the zipper came through, and it was awful. Um, I had to fix the bag. It was, it was almost not fixable. Mm, come on, where are you at? They got the flannel pockets. Gotta get this to pop out of there. There we go. Tuck in that pocket. Voila. Yes. Okay, so we can just tuck our liner in. Nope, I have no openings there. Um, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and stand up for this part. Take your thread, your zipper tails, pull them down. Zipper tail, pull it down on the inside. Tuck your flaps in. Start at your side seam. Seams. Any loose threads, sometimes they pull out, sometimes you gotta cut them. Tug on your inside liner to make everything nice and straight and tight along the top edge. This is where you definitely want to pin or clip. Keep everything nice and flat and straight. I'm just going to show everybody what I do as I go. And I figured live videos was the best way for me. Um, I can make more specific, you know, 
videos straight to the point, like how to how to make a how to do a zipper pocket or how to make an adjustable strap. Um, you know, I could do a couple of those along the way, but I make a lot of stuff, so I figured why not just start shooting live while I'm making it, and that'll kind of help open the door of getting myself out there, getting myself known to the YouTube world. I've been at it for six years, and I just started doing Facebook Live this summer, but not sewing. I was actually going on Facebook Live to sell my product. Um, and, you know, I, I made good money. Everything was great there, but everybody was in, you know, kind of demanding of when you're going back on, when you're going back on, well, it takes me time to make the inventory. So that became a stress factor very quickly for me. And I loved it. You know, I loved that people were waiting for me to come on, but I'm coming on and I'm showing you the same stuff I had last week because I only made two things. <laughs> um, so where everybody else is, you know, they got store-bought stuff. This is this my I'm in another category, I think, another world here. So with that pocket, I just there's the raw edges. Just took my fingers and I poked in those side seams. And everything else kind of just wants to line up with it naturally, wants to fall into place. So you just kind of help it along the way. I'm out of clips, so let's use these big. These big wonky things here. We'll use one there. Use one there. How do you like that? <laughs> and that keeps it close. So we're going to just do a straight line across. And like I said, I like to do two lines. So I'm going to do a lot, two lines going across to seal that up. It's not an OCD thing. It's a sewing thing. I don't do everything in twos. <laughs> Only when I sew. Only when I'm sewing a line. So, so what? <laughs> Let's remove our giant clip. You can choose to do this part last. So I've, I've actually, I have actually forgot to close out the pocket one time. This happened one time and one time only. And when the customer bought the bag, she didn't use it for about a month. Um, she was waiting, you know, for the season to change. And she gets the bag out. She said she stuck her keys and her phone in the pocket. And, and all of a sudden her keys and phone disappeared. <laughs> The pocket wasn't closed up. And she gets a hold of me and I'm like, oh my, I knew right away. And thank goodness that it wasn't one that I had to ship off to another state. This happened to be a lady that lived right in my area. And uh, she just brought it over, dropped it off, and then went grocery shopping, came back, or you know, whatever she had to do, and came back and picked it up a half hour later. She could have actually just waited for me to close it up because it doesn't take long at all. But she's like, I'll be right back. i got to run an error and I'll be right back. I'm like, all right. She came back by, picked it up, good to go. So now I just close. I check everything. Like you like you seen, I, I put all my clips on top. I make sure everything's right. And then I go ahead and close up my pocket. Because this is your opening. So this is your means to get back inside that bag if you have to in order to make a correction. So you might, you know, you want to check everything out before you close up your opening. I got to start getting more pictures on my website, too. Now we got to remember this flannel turns brown. We hit it with a lighter, so I just want to. I want to get the. I want to get the threads. I'm trying to not hit the flannel. I'm 
Alright, good to go there. Let's tuck our pocket back in. Use your finger to hook up those corners. Beautiful. And because there is a side piece that got added, I know some of you might be thinking that the zipper doesn't, it looks off centered. You know, there's more of the crock fabric, less of the green. That's because of this side piece. So with that side piece in, included, um, this was the center, you know, when you lay your panel down flat. So it gives it a cool look. I like making bags with little flannel squares because it's soft. You got your regular cotton. You got your canvas down here, your, you know, your tougher fabric your cotton, and then you got some soft squares to touch. Um, you know, when the baby gets older, they can always, you know, show them their baby bag. And it'll be soft for the, you know, the toddler to touch. And it's cool. We got three nice big pockets in here for the bottles and sippy cups. The pocket here for the phone. I mean, the inside is just wonderful. Look at that. This isn't even my full diaper bag. You should see my my real ones like they're oblong they got 11 pockets I, I i go all out because i'm a mama of seven so i know exactly what i would want in my diaper bag and i always ask are you a first time mom or um you know you got a lot of kids because that makes a difference first time moms tend to go all out you know they they, they want they want something for you know a spot for everything uh, mothers who have more than one child, you know, this is their third or their fourth, they tend to want something that's a little simpler, straight to the point. Um, they know that they don't have to carry half of the baby's room everywhere they go. So it's a learning process when you're a first-time mom. All right, here we go. Let's close her up. Ask Jesus, ask God to guide my hand as I close up this bag. We don't want any problems. It's going to go to some new parents with the little one on the way. So we're going to bless it. I always, I always bless my bags. I never did it on camera. I thought maybe people would think it was silly, but I asked for God to guide my hands. And I bless my bag so that when they go to the next person, it's almost like there was a blessing put onto that bag. Um, it's my way of spreading the word, spreading God's love, which is far and few in this world today. All right, here we go. Remember when we get to the end of the zipper panels, we want to kind of go back and forth there um, to secure that zipper panel down just at the ends. Oops, this is a thick spot. My machine is saying, help me out, Mom. You don't have to worry about securing your straps because they were already secured double time when the bag was inside out. Make sure your uh, zipper tails are down. Nothing's up and no, nothing got in the way there. When it comes to the side seam, if you have too much of a hump, too much of a lump there, like a little mountain. Go ahead and just use your hand crank. I like to set my fingers on there like this and kind of help, not with the push, but a little bit of a push so nothing gets stuck when it's too big of a bump. 
again, make sure everything's laying flat when you're approaching the next zipper panel. Go nice and slow over the strap part. See my threads from where I started, so I'm going to go ahead and clip those. I need a camera on this angle so you guys can see it sewing. Just I don't know, part of the show. We're about to approach our last zipper panel. Right there it is. And we're back and forth. machine mama is tired we are all done ladies and gentlemen let me set my camera up on the table put my camera down So what would be like a normal shoulder bag tote was made for a baby bag. We have the outside zipper pocket. Um, now, like I said before, most of my zipper, my diaper bags, they're not in this way. I shape them differently and I put a bunch of outside pockets, inside pockets, all together like 11 pockets. So, um, you know, this is like a baby bag tote bag for the new parents, matching the theme that they chose for their little boy, alligators and turtles. And believe it or not, I had a really hard time finding alligators and then finding turtles that weren't sea turtles. That was, I love turtles. I have lots of sea turtle material, but no baby turtles. So I had to drive to go find that. Here's the other side with no zipper pocket. We got that side chevron piece there. And then we have nice long shoulder straps. They're not too long, but they're perfect. I'm a shorty. I'm only five foot. So I could, you know, I have no problem carrying this bag. So nobody else should either, no matter short or tall. Then we got a nice, whoop, there's a little fuzzy. Nice, beautiful interior. We got the three, three pockets on the inside there. And they're nice and deep. They're very deep. Like here, here's a water bottle. The water bottle is, look at how it sets. 
So if a water bottle can sit in there, so can a baby bottle or a sippy cup without falling out. Let's try our other side pocket, which I see a fuzzy. So that feasible, please. Let's see how deep this one is. This one's deep enough too to hold it. See there? So all together, you got four pockets that can hold baby bottles or sippy cups, diapers, whatever you need. And then it's a nice, deep, large bag. And you got your zipper pocket. So when you open it up, you're going to see turtles. Turtles are facing the right direction. And this is, it's not real deep, but it's not short neither. It's not shallow. It is, my finger's right here. So it's about halfway down. Perfect for mom to throw a phone in or pacifier, you know, little things, maybe ointment, diaper rash cream. So you know it's all right there in that pocket and you can be organized. Um, and then the benefit about these zippers that have the tails on them, it's got, you can create, you know, it's like a hidden zipper, like kind of a security feature. You could tuck those tails in. And then you can't see your zipper ends. See there? So nobody nobody knows. You know, it's a handmade bag. They're like, hey, how do you get into the bag? Where's the zipper? <laughs> so if you have your bag hanging on hanging on a hook somewhere at daycare or hanging on a chair at a restaurant, nobody can see inside your bag and they can't see the zipper to get into it neither. So that's also a cool feature when you got those zipper tails. So again, this bag is already sold. It's already spoken for. If you want to help, if you want to create a bag of your own and have me make it for you, you, know, you choose the color, you choose the print, the team, the theme, the animal, um, whatever you want. Even the style of the bag. I have. I can make so many different styles. Um, Get a hold of me and I will we'll collaborate together and come up with the plan and I'll make the bag for you. If you want to order a bag for a Christmas present, December 15th is the deadline. I accept PayPal. I can send an invoice to your email. Um, we can credit or debit can be paid with the invoice to email. You can pay PayPal. And I think that's all set up for right now. So, and I do ship anywhere in the USA, um, fair, fair shipping prices. I usually underprice the shipping. I don't mean to, but I do. And uh, you would have to go on the website. When you go to the website, my store is kind of empty right now. So take a peek at the gallery. The gallery has some older items that I made. It's been a while since I've updated that. But um, as you see, you can go on uh, my Facebook page. It's also named Spitzy Banger. And my website is www.spitzybanger.com. If you like what you see, please subscribe and share. And I'll be making lots more videos. Um, and we can have lots of fun. Thank you, guys. Have a beautiful weekend.